is Victor I'm here with a new painting tutorial and this time I'm going to explain how I do these ruins, okay? How I will paint the ruins that are from uh, War Cry. Okay. The first thing is as a preparation for to have the ruins to this level, okay? You can see they have like some shading already on the ruins. Uh, you can see that uh, it's not what I did here is I paint I primed them in black. And then I did a zenithal with a very light clay. You can see as well on these ones. So I have done the same. You see that there is some shading. So to have this preparation, just uh, 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 prime in black and then zenithal from the top, a little bit uh, as well on the bottom because you have to reach this uh, with a light clay. If you want to know more about zenithal, I have a tutorial in my channel so I will try to put the link in the description below and you will uh, you will find as well how to do the zenithal so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, doing some details and then we are going to paint the bricks so in that one I don't have um, the grids, the metal grids so I will, I, you will see that in during the tutorial maybe I will change from one to the other okay so here we have the metal grids and here we have uh, these ones with the bricks, okay? So I will start doing the bricks and to do the bricks I will apply uh, Gilliman Flesh on these bricks, okay? I will try to go for a terracotta looking and as we have this uh, grey as a base color you will see that you, you can have a, a nice terracotta look with the Gilliman Flesh, okay? So you apply this on all the areas where you want this grey uh, to go or this, sorry, this terracotta or these bricks, this color of the bricks. I will do it on these small bricks, on all the uh, arch, um, on the archways where we have all these uh, bricks, okay? So, uh, I mainly it's going to be these small ones, I will do with this terracotta looking. So I will apply that, and I come back to you once uh, I have applied that, and you will see how they look like. I will do this for all the pieces of terrain, so to avoid to take too much time on you, uh, I will keep doing that, okay? So, yeah. Okay. To do the grids, I will use uh, iron breaker. So you can see uh, I have done the bricks, okay? They are no drying. Okay, you can see the bricks there. I need to check here because the Paint for a little bit down and I will drag it up. Okay, but here you see, these are the bricks. Okay, right. it's okay if the bricks are not uniform on the same color. Uh, normally, bricks should not be all the same color. You can have dust, you can have any type of things. Okay, so I'm letting them dry. But now we are going to paint the grid so the the metal parts, okay? And what I'm going to use is Iron Breaker uh, as a base color for this. We are going to apply this on all the grids, okay? So I'll try, we, here we have to be careful really to, to paint all the grids and, and try not to go over the stones. So I will do this on all of them, including the broken ones like this one here, okay? So I do that, um, be careful to do both sides and as well in, in the inside parts, okay? Don't forget any, this can be a little bit time consuming on brush. But yeah, this is what the tools I'm using. Okay, so I will do that and I come back once it is done. Okay, once we have done the metal grids, this is not the one with the metal grids, but here we have this one. Okay, with so all the metal grids done. Okay, the next step we are going to do is we are going to use wire wood contrast on the wood parts. Okay. I will show you here how I do the upper part, but let's just start with this small one here. So what we want to do is 
you just apply this contrast pane and we are going to use more or less the same technique we used for the stairs in, in one of my weekly paintings so we apply this, we let the different uh, the detail to pop up ok, here we have and we, we go on ok again quite straightforward uh, when applying contrast paint, I try to do it like if it's a layer, right? I try not to put too much paint and I let it flow, I try to avoid that it's accumulating so it's between a, a layer and a, and, a, and a wash in a way okay, here I do, here it's going, it's going to look very dark, I'm okay with that okay, so to be fair, the building at the bottom is not that well finished Okay, you see there is some, so it's not made to be look from the bottom. But I will paint the wood anyway. Be sure I have all the wood with this dark brown. Okay, so I apply that on all the wood parts, and I'm back once it's done. Okay, this is how it will look like once the wood, uh, the wild wood, have dried. And now I'm going to use typhus corrosion. Okay. This is a technical paint and I will use it uh, on the metallic parts to create uh, some, uh, you want to create some random uh, I like it to dilute it a little bit more even and uh, we create some random uh, damage or I will say rust parts, okay? Not, not, to, not everywhere, okay? but I, I like to, to do something like that okay? and you create it for example, in, in places where you think that the rust will come out, for example, just here, I'll put it next to the. Try not to dirtin. It's not a big problem if you put a little bit on the on the rocks, but I would I would try to avoid to dirtin the rocks. I will add a little bit more on the bottom. Okay, and we just uh, put random patterns. Okay, so create some variation. Uh, like this is this have been here uh, abandoned, uh, yeah, abandoned or ruined for years. So the rust will start appearing in some points. Uh, maybe because there was some damage. Uh, we don't know, but I will just apply some random. You can see. In, you want to keep the metallic look but uh, you want to uh, at the same time I want to apply some of these random uh, dark, darker patterns okay so here and then I will try to go to the bottom as well so we have a door here I it and I go to the bottom in this one I will do as well here at the bottom because it's just a goal level okay so we do that on both uh, sides uh, I, on the ones that are broken, I like to apply it, especially on the parts where it's broken. Okay. Here I will put a little bit more. Like if the metal has been damaged and then it's more exposed. Okay, so I will apply this on all the grids, you can see. Huh? And I'm going, it's quite a fast. You can apply more at the bottom as well. Here I will apply more at the bottom. Okay, and I will do now the other side and I come back for the next step. So once typhus corrosion has dry, okay, and we have this um, random pattern, I'm going to use Rizal Rust, okay, and I will apply this on top where I have applied Rizal Corrosion. But I like to th um, take water with my brush and try to Okay, you will see that you will have this nice. Well, it's I just apply the reci the recipe of ink washer, right? This to apply first rizzo and typhus corruption, and then rizzo rust. Okay, and I do here the base. Uh, typhus corruption gives some texture. Uh, I try to go not too heavy with the orange because I want to give a. Uh, uh, I want to give the sensation of a darker color, so this brush is 
Let me just take another one. We'll take this one is really damaged. Okay, we'll take this one here. Take a different arrow. But you, you want to use brush. I, I don't need precision for this work, but I want something that is a little bit softer, okay? Now I applied. Well, I have applied uh, the type of corrosion before. Okay, you don't need to go on all the spots where you apply typhus corrosion, but I like to apply it in almost all of them. Okay, I like for here it was a little bit too orange. If you if it's too orange, I take some water, and now I just uh, put put it with some water. I like more when it's more thin, so this is why I take water with my brush and normally I thin it down a little bit. Okay, okay, when I do it on there, we keep doing all the grid. If you take too much, like here, oh, what I will do, okay, you see, this is why I like it to put with water, no, I, I mix it down a little bit, okay, here that was very dark, I apply quite a lot, if you go a little bit out of the typhus corrosion, it's not the end of the world neither. So you can see. These technical paints really give a very nice rust effect. Okay, you can. And here we are going to go heavy, right? I will do the other side and I come back for the next step. Okay, next step we are going to do a wash all over the miniature with Aquax Airshade. You need to wash the wood because it's already quite dark, but you need, I, I will wash all the other parts of the miniature, especially the stone and the, and, and the grids. Okay, I will uh, recommend you to start from the a uh, part that is more, uh, more uh, less accessible, the inside. So it will start from this side, and I uh, suggest you to start from one wall and keep working this wall uh, and going wrong. Okay. So I will do this part. This part is important to it first because it's difficult to access. You need to put the miniature or the, the piece of terrain upside down, and uh, the other parts can be painted uh, standing up. The other option is you paint half of the miniature, for example, this half and then the other half later on. But try to um, stop in a place where you can have a very well-defined finishing. For example, here, and then you can do the other side, okay? Uh, don't stop in the middle of a wall, because then you will see, uh, it's going to, it's not, not always matching that well when you do the wash in two sessions, okay? So this is uh, what I'm going to do now. I'm going to apply the Aqua Air Shade. Uh, as usual, try to avoid uh, all the all the devices when we apply a wash, right? Try to avoid that is pulling. Uh, it's not going to be that bad. It pulls some uh, in some places, but uh, let's try to avoid it uh, the max we can. And uh, don't forget uh, to put uh, don't forget to put this on the uh, grids, okay? Because we want to darken this metal. No, we want it to look it darker. This is why I was uh, I start with uh, the the iron breaker, I didn't start from the light belcher, this is a darker metal. Okay, so I will apply it everywhere. We are going to have this wash, we are going to dirt in all the miniature, and this will be the, the maybe the step that you have to be careful uh, how you how you do that. Uh, try not to put the finger in the places that you already applied the wash. Okay, so I will do this all over the miniature, and I come back and show you how it looks like once we have applied the wash. Okay, 
once the wash has dried, this is how it will look like. Okay, we have some shading, you see that it, we have this brown dirtiness. And what we are going to do next, we are going to dry brush to bring back some of the highlights. Okay, I'm going to use a glazier, this is a new base from, but you can use any very light gray that you want to use. Okay, and we are going to apply this. Uh, over uh, all, so we are going to do a brush over the whole stone work. We try to avoid the bricks and we try to avoid the grids. Okay, so we, know we try to avoid as well the wood when we are doing this one. Okay, and we are going to apply, I recommend to start very soft. Okay, so it like that. I like to go from top to bottom, doing soft, and I try to hit all the different okay. We are going to do as well the top. This will help to pop up and give some additional highlight now and see apply as much as you want okay and we do all the stone work like that I'm not very concerned if I go a little bit on, on this at this point on this on the wood, I will do the, the, the version they will later on. But the intention here is to give some highlights, so I will do them as well here inside of the building. Okay, you can see that almost I just did the one paint. This is going to use a very little paint. See now that with the wash we have darkened a lot of parts. Remove this when I'm doing the buildings. Okay, the columns. And see, and I have not take more paint. Okay, I'm just keep pulling the same that they took in first place. So I will finalize this, applying this on the whole building, and I come back once this is done. Okay, once we have done the dry brushing, and it looks like that, we are going to use no uh, bane blade brown, and we are going to dry brush on the wood. Okay, again, we take this, is, take a, some, this is some finishing my, this is just the end of the pot now. Okay, we take with a paper towel we dry the brush okay, and I try to do the dry brushing in the direction like that. Okay, what we want to do here is to pop up all the detail of the wood and at the same time give a, we are going to give a dusty effect on the wood okay we do it on that side and we do it on the opposite side you see this is quite fast
Okay. Here we are. I'm not too concerned if I go over the stone, it's not going to be visible if I touch the stone with this color. Okay, so here we have. Okay, next step we are going to do a third dry brush, a second over the wood. The wood. We are going to use racker flesh to give even more help, uh, public touch. We have to be lighter with this one. And I will apply it as well on the stone to give. Uh, uh, to add variation to the stone and give this uh, brown um, uh, a brown type of uh, shade and uh, highlight it as well. Okay, on the stone we don't do it everywhere. We just do it on some places where you want it. But for example, here on the on the wood, we are going to apply it like that. And you will see that now, really, all the detail will be super visible. We do it on the opposite direction. See now we give this this the look I'm was looking for and take a little bit more. And now we are going to do it as well on top of the stone. Okay, we'll give this. We don't need to do all over the stones. We are going to do the opposite side as well. Here I put too much, but it doesn't matter too much there. You can see. Okay, and now I'm going to apply it in some parts. For example here that was quite dark still. We'll apply it. We can apply in this column for example to make it a different look. Okay, we can apply a little bit more this one here. I like to apply quite different dry brushes because this is so flat that you want to add color variation to make it more uh, interesting. Okay, and here you apply it in random places. Okay, especially if you see that some parts were not you missed before with the previous dry brushing. I will insist in these zones, for example this one, I have the feeling that was not as of the whole much I wanted, so I apply it here again. Okay, these two. Okay. I, this one was okay, I will do this part. Okay. This is what we want to do with the second. Okay, and just adding some more highlight variation. Okay, the intention is not to have uniformity, right? You want to break uniformity by adding different dry brushing and weathering effects. Okay, so this is okay for this now. And we are going to go now for the pigments. So now that we have done all the dry brushing, we are going to start adding some weathering. I will start adding uh, H Rust. This is from Forge World, but this, uh, you can use any one that you want. It's a reddish one. Okay, and I will apply this uh, in dry. So I will not have to use a brush that is completely dry. We don't need a good brush to work with the with the pigments at this point. Or just this one. Okay, and what I want to do, what I want to do, so let's first of all remove this and I'm going to apply this one the thing I recommend to everybody. I will put just but you will see that the uh, applying with pigments is quite dirty. So I'm going to apply this so you can see here how the pigments are falling. Okay. 
So we are take, for example, this, the rust, I will apply it on around the grid. And I will apply it, for example, here, right? Like that. Apply like that. If it's too much, and we, we are, right? So we will apply a little bit on, on some of the... Okay, so you can see that the powder is falling. And I will use this powder to add, okay, just like that. I'm going, I'm going to apply well, some there. Okay. And if it's like that, that you feel that you have put too much, later on you always can wrap off the excess. Even you can use a tissue, okay, you see you remove the excess with this tissue. Throw away everything that you have with the... So I'm going to apply this especially on the grids. Not, uh, be different, don't, don't put the same on all the grids, okay. This I will apply it right like that. Okay, you see that the grid is too shiny, you always can apply it. Add some rusting, okay, and you can see that we are doing everything here. Okay, here I just did the borders too fast. And if in some cases you put too much, you also can come with a with a wet brush. Okay, so let me do it like that. Okay, once the pigment is touching, will dilt in, and later on, will the excess will fall down. Okay, so something like that. We'll here put a little bit on the foam. Okay. Be careful when you don't blow too much. Okay, I will do this on the metallic parts and then with the same bread we are going to work as well a little bit on the bricks. Okay, with the bricks we want we can add a little bit of more reddish color. So we can add take a little bit of this and add it on the bricks. So you can see that with this rust you give a very nice touch on the bricks. So normally have more of this reddish stone. This is what we want here. And you can accumulate as some brick dust have fall down. So I will put it here as well. I like to apply it on, on the bricks to give a little bit of to increase the reddish tone on the bricks, right? Remember uh, playing with pigments is dirty. You're going to dirt on everything, so later on you will need to clean up all this mess. Okay, this is why I put this because then I remove this piece of paper, I throw it away, and uh, no more problems. Okay, so this is the first uh, pigment we are going to use. This reddish one, we can keep it, we can put it other places if you want. So here is just playing with pigments and making your shading. Okay. Next one I'm going to use is I'm going to use a darker brown, not too dark, I'm using a medium earth. Okay, of course you don't need to shake these ones. This one I will apply mainly on the main corners. Okay. So this will help me to simulate dirtiness on the corners. Okay. So we can apply it there. You have to be careful as well, so I will apply for example here that is broken. Okay, because it also can give the sensation of burn out. 
fall that much. Okay. And with this one, we can apply as well. Like here, we're gonna apply like that. Okay, like don't take too much. We take. Even with the right one, you can do this. And if you want, you can even apply a little bit on the stone, because I want some on the wood, because the wood will also be dirty and will give some variation as well on the stone. Okay, so this is just to break the uniformity. You don't need to do it in all the stones. On the parts that I, I suggest to apply a some. Is on these parts that are broken. Okay. We'll apply it here on this corner, for example. Especially the corners that you see that are too clean. Put it there, no need to go too heavy, just and the powders will do almost all the job for you, eh? So the only thing that you have to be careful is how you hold the miniature, not to wrap all the powders with your fingers. Okay. And apply it. so you apply it random in random places just to give the look of dirty and old, okay? You can see that you use a bad brush because I'm stabbing the brush against the, the miniature, okay? You, here you have some powder, you can take this one so again, put it into you and you see, so yes, this is why I use this paper because I think it's quite interesting. Here it is broken, let me take, okay? And then we put have some oxide and that's the matter thing if you just use two or three pigments does not matter too much if you mix them. I need to I'll remove this, I don't want the water no. Okay. Here I will apply a little bit more. I will take all the dark ones. Okay. Especially here, I will just cut it like that. And yeah, we keep working like that. Okay, this corner here, I will add it a little bit more. Okay, we add it here, and when we add, why not, the bottom. Okay, so this intention is just to um, remove the cleanness of the, of the miniature, okay. This will be my, my last step, mainly. Let's go to, to look at, let's, okay, we have our folder again. Okay, yeah, there, and now I will show you another thing, so I will use the light earth, okay, this is a lighter color, the lighter color I will use it as well to add powder here. Okay, so you can add this. Okay, you can see, especially the parts where we, if you have shiny in some parts because the wash sometimes leaves some shiny uh, uh, aspects, so just add a little bit some edge wheels, you also add it. And here the, 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 the is, this is much lighter one, so it's just to even put more powder and you want to just Put it random, put it where you like it, okay, and 
that's all. We can add as well some of these when I'm putting my fingers now, so put them up here. Okay, you see. And again, this is one of the most dirty techniques that you will have to use. You see, it gives a very nice uh, weathering effect. Here it's too clean, so I'm going to add especially at the bottom. You want to add especially the bottom of the building because it's the part that will be uh, more exposed to dust from the ground. Uh, and then the other part I like to apply is this part because it looks quite uniform. Okay, and I want to be sure that we have some dirtiness. Okay, so we keep working like that. This is the one I will apply more. Okay, the light earth is the one that I, I think I like, I like the most for this building. But you can work with all of this, okay? So now I will change, I will contaminate my brush. And you can see I go a lot to the corners. Okay. And it's up to how you feel that is good enough. For example, I still see, if I still see clean areas, I will take some and add, take some dust and add it there, okay? Some powders. Some parts you want really to look dirtier and then the bottom I also like to put it in different places, changing color. I like that this not uniform and not all have to look the same okay so I get at this point then Remember, this is a quite dirty technique. What you see, if you put too much, you just eliminate the access, and now you can spread and make this. Okay. What you can do as well, let me see if I still have. We'll take a, a clean this one. So, the other thing that you can do is just take a piece of paper and you can. You've seen that it's too much. And if it's still too much, you can always put some water on the tissue and we'll remove it even more. Right? This is a little bit humid because I was... Just be careful because the paper can break. You can also use the... But you can see here that I put too much. Come. I remove the excess but I'm quite happy and this is how I will do the weathering so yeah here you have the building is weathered and I will do now the other one that was with the grid and they will be ready for battle so once you have done the weathering uh, then to fix all the pigments there is two ways to do it this is using a a special solvent to fix the pigments or you can use uh, I will uh, varnish it all with matte paint uh, with matte varnish sorry and then the pigment will be fixed and trapped in the varnish I will use a spray because it's easier for me here you have the so let me show you one thing we'll take another brush okay if I come with the brush wet I can remove part of this paint okay if you think that you have too much there Okay, you can remove part of this. You can also use that to spread more the the pigments to help to spread the pigments. This is not a need that you can use, but I don't think it's needed at this stage. I think now it's looking nicely, and the only watch out is when you use the water to 
wash the pigments, it will do dark at the beginning and then when they dry will you know, recover the original color and this matte effect. So yeah, that's all to paint the ruins. Okay, this is how I'm doing the ruins for my um, war cry. I hope you find this interesting. Please let me know what do you think. Here you see the side look. Okay, I hope you can see it nicely. Here you see the part of the bricks. I think they look nice and this is how I do the ruins for Warcry. So that's all for now. As usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!